Hey man, I'm Chris with Phone Cats, and it's magic time. There was an expansion for Duels of the Planeswalker 2014. Here is my favorite deck in the expansion so far. This is an elf deck. I'm just kind of kind of like flip through it, but we're going to go through all the cards individually. Um, I'm going to talk about the deck that I'm running right now and uh, a couple other possible alternative builds, and we're going to go through all the cards that I'm not even including too. So if this is your first look at this deck, you're going to be crazy overwhelmed. This deck... First off, I'm running 31 creatures. The only things that aren't creatures that are in this deck are forests and the Slate of Ancestries, which are an insane amount of card draw, and these Lead the Stampedes, which are more card draw. So everything else in this deck that isn't a forest or those two card draw mechanics are elves. And that goes all the way for the rest of the deck. But let's get started. Here's one of the main combo mechanics and a strong turn 3 play, a turn 5 play, and you can even play it without kicking it and still pull some tricks off. This is Joraga Warcaller, 1 mana for a 1-1 one, one elf. You could stop there and people would probably still play this. But when it enters the battlefield, for each time it was kicked, it gets plus 1, plus 1. And other elf creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1 for each plus 1, plus 1 counter on this dude. All right. I'm going to skip around a lot, so this is going to be kind of a confusing vid. But that first card we just talked about gets plus one, plus one. And then this Immaculate Magistrate is four mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Tap it, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature for each elf you control. Almost all my games with this build are ending with me tapping that dude to put a whole bunch of plus one counters on this and then swinging in with a whole bunch of seven seven eights eights i've seen 11 11s and it can get more disgusting so that's one of the main win conditions but let's keep rolling so that's one mana for a one one elf right now i'm playing both of these taunting elves and they're really cool and situational i actually like that art he's carrying a whole bunch of i don't even know what those are like a sack of berries and that huge monster's chasing him because he's taunted so it's one mana for a 01, and all creatures able to block Taunting Elf must do so. This is your kill shot. Um, this is when you attack with all your dudes, and then everything they have has to block this Taunting Elf. You can even play it as turn one, and then just make them deal with it, because sometimes they'll be scared. But those these are something that they're going to want to kill. This is something that they're going to want to kill. And we'll just keep rolling. Everything in this deck they're gonna wanna kill. Like, this is such a crazy deck to me right now. It has no removal, but it's all combo -y aggro stuff. Here's Essence Warden, and now we're getting into the life gain mechanics. I've already hit over 100 life with this deck, and I've already milled myself out. So this deck has huge life gain, huge card draw, and huge combo potential with these creatures. Essence Warden is another stout 1 mana for a 1-1. One, one. It's basically a Soul Warden. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, you gain 1 life. If you enjoy playing the uh, the White Weenie deck, what is it, Avacyn's Glory? Avacyn's Glory? And you like whenever you get those two Soul Wardens in play, then you're going to love playing this deck. The Essence Warden isn't even the main combo mechanic, but a lot of, cre a lot of decks will remove this, just thinking that it's kind of like a backbone. Or in a lot of decks don't want you gaining any life, which becomes an ongoing thing. So, so far, these are all one drops that just have crazy abilities, and we're just getting started. Here's a one of. One mana for a one one hexproof. It's an elf. I mean, that is so strong as is. There's a reason there's only one of those. This copper horn scout, one mana for a one one. Whenever it attacks, untap each other creature you control. Okay, that is significant because a lot of creatures in this deck, like Fauna Shaman, have tap mechanics. Let's see. These Well Wishers, tap mechanic. Um, What else we got? This guy, put a 1-1 one, one token into play. That's a tap mechanic. This thing that buffs all your dudes, that's a tap mechanic. And that's it for this version of the deck that I'm running. There's a lot more creatures that cost 3 mana, both of these dudes. 3 mana for a 1-2, and it gives a creature XX, so that combos with it. And then this Branch Bender, 3 mana for a 2-2, two, two, and then you tap it, and it turns a forest into a creature. I'm not running either of those, but they would both combo with this humble 1-of card, that 1-1 one, one for 1 mana. That's really strong. There's a reason they only gave you one of those. 
Spire Tracer is a little peculiar. It's basically like a little evasion, dude. One mana for a 1-1. One, one. He can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. So this is just a turn one play that you can swing in with and just attack every turn, and most decks aren't going to be able to deal with it for a while. I don't know. It might be more geared towards an aggro build, but right now I'm just playing with every one drop elf that I got, and that's the end of it. Um, I guess we'll keep this casting cost based because sometimes I like to do that. I'm not running the Rancors, which seems strong, but I'm not playing with them right now. And I'm not running this Insist either. Um, the next creature spell you cast can't be countered, and you draw a card. I kind of want to play it just because you... It almost seems like the Thought Scour of this deck to where you would pay one mana, draw one card, and it just puts you closer to all your meaty combo cards. But I'm not running anything that isn't a creature right now. And the reason is, god this vid is so scatterbrained, is because I'm playing Lead the Stampedes. I'm running all four Lead the Stampedes and all four of these Sylvan Messengers. So these are your card draw mechanics. Um, three mana, look at the top five cards of your library. You reveal any number of creature cards among them and put them in your hand. So pay three mana, look at the top five cards of your library and put all creatures in your hand. That is so sick, dude. It's so sick that I'm not running anything that isn't a creature besides card draw mechanics because I just want to hit three creatures, four creatures. God forbid I hit five creatures and freak out. Um, here's the Sylvan Messenger, same kind of deal. You pay one extra colorless mana and you get a trampling 2-2 elf. So that's definitely worth it to me. One of the little trades off, trade off is you reveal the top four cards of your library instead of five. And for this one, you put all elf cards into your hand, revealed this way. So with this dude, leave the stampede, there's no creature, and you grab everything that isn't an elf, or all creatures. And then with this one, you're only grabbing elves specifically. So you kind of need to tweak your deck in a certain way to take advantage of these cards. Um, you don't want to be casting a lead the stampede and only drawing one card, or a sylvan messenger and then hit a whole bunch of creatures that aren't elves and there are a decent amount of creatures that aren't elves so stay focused man this is an elf deck so try to keep it that way or at least that's my mentality right now i'll probably tweak this down the line but right now this is a fun combo -y build it's not about aggro it's about combo and life gain and card draw and i love it dude this is one of the most fun decks to play that i found so far and it has a really high win rate in this current meta so let's keep moving. Uh, we got this Fauna Shaman. Super strong. There's only one of these. Two mana for a 2-2 two, two elf. People would play it if it had no abilities, but you can pay one, discard a creature card, search your library for a creature card. So whatever nutsy elf is, whatever the perfect elf is that you need, you can dump a chump elf and then go grab that hot elf. It could be a taunting elf if you're going for that kill shot. It could be a Joraga Warcaller if you're just looking for a huge pump up and swing. Um, yeah, dude, it's a Fauna Shaman. Like, you just always grab the best thing. It's kind of weird because I never really know what the best card is. I guess grabbing that Joraga Warcaller and then an Immaculate Magistrate is your normal kill shot. And it puts you like a turn away from victory. But any game that you get one of those Fauna, that you hit your Fauna Shaman, you're just playing the best possible thing each turn. It's so cool. I'm running this Elvish Vanguard. I believe there's only one of these, and it's a little odd. Two mana for a 1-1, one, one, and then whenever another elf enters the battlefield, you get plus one, plus one. So that could get pretty crazy in the mirror match. And um, just, it's like the white decks, um, Champion of the Parish, if that's what it's called. Every time a creature comes into play on your side of the field, you pump this dude up. I like it because it's removal bait. People are afraid of it, and they know you're playing elves, and I have 30 elves in this deck, 31 at that. So you're always going to be speeding for elves. Um, if they don't remove it, and you get to a little bit more mid to late game, your lead the stampedes and your sylvan messengers just got that much more juicy. And with 11 one mana casting cost elves, and is it 12 two mana elves? Are all my two drops elves? They are. This deck is so funky strong, dude. So this thing is a threat. There's only one of them, so take it with a grain of salt, but let's keep rolling. This Talara's Battalion is something I'm a little on the fence about. 
It's two mana for a 4-3 trample, and you can cast this battalion only if you've cast another green spell this turn. So, it really reminds me of the blue card in the, um, in the Illusion deck, the Illusory Angel that's three mana for a 4-4 that you can only cast if you've cast another creature spell. But this one's just another green spell. I'm running it. People remove it. They get scared. Um, this is the only card with Trample that I have in the deck. So that's worth taking into account. But if you can get that out and then throw these counters on it, that's strong. Um, it's just a nice card. It's another two drop that I had to play. I don't know. Oh my god, dude. Look at my deck. The only... <laughs> the only one drops I'm not running are those three non-creature spells and then the only two drop I'm not running is Gaia's Herald and that art is really cool look at all those snakes if that was a poster I would buy it that is so sick shout out to Jim Murray so it's two mana for a 1-1 one, one. creature spells can't be countered so if you're playing draw and burn this could be legit or if you're playing um, the illusion deck then this could be a good play Otherwise, I'm passing, man. But let's keep moving. It's so crazy that these are the only cards under three mana that I'm not playing. I love that. This deck plays so fast. Where are we? We just touched on the battalion, and let's just keep rolling with the two drops. Another solid card. Two mana for a 2-2 two -two elf, Jump Palm Strider. This thing has cycling, so if it just had cycling, I would probably play it. And then if you ever draw it late game, you can just draw a card. But whenever you cycle it, it casts like a mini overrun without trample. Elf creatures you control get plus two, plus two until end of turn. So this thing is a mini kill shot. Um, if you hit your taunting elf, and then you cycle this dude. Where did he go? Let's say you have a taunting elf on the board, and then you cycle your gem palm strider on, I don't know, turn five or six and swing in with a whole bunch of elves. If your elves were only 1-1s, one and you had 6 elves, they just became 3-3s. Three and if you had 6 of them, you're about to swing in for... That's 18 damage. So that would be a kill shot if you had a taunting elf out. But that's a little situational. But you have so much life gain, though, that <laughs> you can normally hit it. Wellwisher. Oh my god, dude, this card is insane. Oh my god, I can't believe you have four of these. If you hit a Fauna Shaman, it, the, one of the meanest things that you can do to someone that can't remove your creatures is just start sprinting for all four of your Well-Wishers. Okay, most games you're going to be able to get five or six creatures on the board without a concern. And then if you have a couple, let's just say you have one Well-Wisher, every turn you're tapping this and you're gaining five or six life. Um, you're gonna hit 60 life, you're gonna hit 70 life. If you hit more than one, you can get nearly 100 life against a lot of decks. Sometimes they can come back, but a lot of people will just rage quit. Um, I mean, I can't even tell you how crazy this card is. This, comboed with Essence Wardens, you can gain so much life. Um, decks aren't gonna be able to touch you, like, you'll just end up not even blocking. Every time they attack, you're just going to take the damage. And then just at the end of their turn, use your Well-Wisher. Um, there's some cutesy mechanics, like uh, we were talking about with this Copperhorn Scout. You can Well-Wish, and then attack, and then it untaps your Well-Wisher. That's just like a little cute one, but this is a core piece of the deck. People are going to kill it, and you're going to be fine with it. Um, people's removal will get outpaced by this deck. With 31 creatures and all this card draw, you're so strong. Well-wisher. It, it's great. It's great. I can't even tell you how much you're going to love this card if you play this deck in this build. I'm still a little funky on this Nissa's Chosen. It's 2 mana for a 2-3, and when it would die, you put it on the bottom of its owner's library. I don't get what the cool part of that is, really. I mean... I see the infinite combo of being, I mean I don't, I just realized this live, but if you have a Fauna Shaman out, you discard a creature card, search your library for a creature card, reveal it and then put it into your hand. So you could infinitely be grabbing Nissa's Chosen and using them to chump block as long as you can keep hitting creatures. 
But I don't know. That's kind of like a stab in the dark. I think with all the card draw, I've already milled myself down to seven cards before and thought that I was going to lose just from that. So this can be like an infinite chump block thing to where your opponent would just have to mill you out instead of attacking. Because if you can block with this every turn and it dies, it would just go back into your library and then every turn you would draw it. So I don't know what's going on. Um, I'm going to have to keep playing to fill that one out more. Okay, so that wraps up the two drops. And that wraps up the two drops that I'm not playing with. So now we're getting to threes. This deck has only six three drop cards. Um, I'm running all four lead the stampedes. So that's three mana. We've already touched base on this. You look at the top five cards and you put all the creature cards in your hand. You do show them to your opponent. So that can be a little weird, but I don't know. Sometimes it can mess them up mentally too. And then they don't know what spell to play or how to deal with it. The other three drops I got are this Imperious Perfect. That's a really weird name. It's three mana for a 2-2, two, two, and this is one of your pump-up mechanics. Other elf creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and you can pay one green and tap it to put an elf token on the battlefield. Man, I wish there were more of these. Um, a lot of times you're going to want to grab this with your Fauna Shaman and then just start putting out elf tokens. I love that they're elves. It combos with everything. This is such a strong card. Three mana for a 2-2. Two, two. It buffs your dudes, and you get a token every turn. You just have to keep that one mana open. That's so strong. It's definitely worth tutoring with Fauna Shaman. And since it's an elf, you can hit it with Lead the Stampedes and Sylvan Messengers. Great card. Was that guy legendary? No, but there's only one of them, so, you know, kind of is almost legendary. Okay, here's another one. Azuri, Renegade Leader. This is 3 mana for a 2-2. Two, two. This is an actually a legendary elf. Um, you can pay 1 green and regenerate another target elf. So he can't use this ability on himself. Or you can pay 5 and cast Overrun, dude. It only goes on your elves. But if you build your deck right, that's all your dudes. So you pay 5. Elf creatures you control get plus 3, plus 3 and trample until end of turn. That's so OP. Let's say you're playing some crazy long stalemate and you got a lot of creatures out and then you top deck this and then play it. If you have eight mana, you can cast it as an overrun, which probably isn't the best thing in the world. But if you have this in play and you hit somehow hit 10 mana, um, you can give all your dudes plus six, plus six. So it's very situational, very crazy. Three mana for a two, two. It can regenerate all your elves and cast overrun. I mean, why would you not want to play that? So that's it for three drops. Here's some of the cards that I'm not running in this build. This is three mana for a 2-2, two, two, Caller of the Claw. Man, if you're paranoid about losing all your elves, this is the clutchest card to hold. But right now, I don't know. I'm just playing a very sprinty, combo-y build. If you want to play more defensive, this Caller of the Claw is a great reply to any kind of removal. So let's say they're, you're playing Dodge and Burn and they're going to wipe all your stuff. Someone's going to play Damnation, uh, Wrath of God, or something equivalent to that. Any kind of board wipe or any situation to where they're swinging in for an alpha strike and you're going to block with all your dudes and lose them, bam. Okay, I'm just reading it so I can make sure that I tell you how to do this right. When Caller of the Claw enters the battlefield, put a 2-2 green bear creature token onto the battlefield for each non-token creature put into your graveyard from the battlefield this turn. I'm still a little leery on if you need to play this before things die or after. And let's see if we can figure this out live. Onto the battlefield for each non-token creature put into your graveyard from the battlefield this turn. Okay, cool. So check it out. When this dude enters the battlefield, you put two two creatures for each creature that was put into the graveyard this turn. So wait for your dudes to die. And you can even do it at the end of their turn which is really strong. So they would attack and assume that all your dudes are dead. And then at the end of their turn, bam, Caller of the Claw. You just got a whole bunch of bears. Keep in mind that they're bears. So they're not elves. They're not going to combo with your other stuff. But this guy is an elf. So he does combo with everything else. And you'll hit him with all your card draws. I don't know. I could see myself throwing that in certain builds. Like a control build. Here's Groundbreaker. I can't believe they gave green a ball lightning. 
What is this doing here? Three mana for a 6-1, Trample Haste. At the beginning of your upkeep, at the beginning of end step, sacrifice Groundbreaker. So you pay three, swing in for a Trample Haste 6-1. Crazy, man. Um, there's a lot of plus plus mechan uh, mechanics in this deck. Like this one right here. Plus one, plus one for each elf you control. Or this one right here. Um, plus one, plus X, plus X. Or X is the number of elves on the battlefield. So with turn three, this. Turn one, elf. Turn two, elf. Turn three, this. Turn four, ball lightning. And then buff it. So you got three elves in play. Eh, that's not even that strong. So it would get plus three, plus three. So you're swinging in with a 9-4 a trample. I don't know. That sounds really strong, but I'm not running it right now. That's like a really funky speed aggro build. Uh, we've been talking about this card the whole time. Timberwatch Elf, three mana for a 1-2. Tap it, target creature gets plus X, plus X until end of turn, where, where X is the number of elves on the battlefield. It seems strong. It's a 1-2. I'm not running it right now. Um, I don't know, man. I'm just a little skeptical of it. I haven't even played it yet, and I feel like I shouldn't even talk trash about it until it gets played, but I, right now in this deck, I don't know what I would take out. I kind of want to take out the Slate of Ancestries, but we're going to talk about those and how that's the craziest card in the whole deck. So I'm not running these. Um, try it for yourself and see what you think. There's four of them, so it's like they want it to be a big mechanic of the deck, but I'm not liking it. Uh, here we go. Three mana for a 2-2, two -two, Elvish Branch Bender. You can play with three of these, and it makes me value it a little bit more than that Timberwatch Elf, just because there's only three of them. Same thing about how, like, if it was rare, I would value it higher, even though it doesn't necessarily make it a better card. This is three mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Tap it. Until end of turn, target force becomes an XX Tree Folk creature in addition to its other types where x is the number of elves you control this card's kind of crazy it's not really a surprise because i mean they know what it is when you play it but the surprise mechanic is that your forest has haste and what i mean is that as long as you can be careful and not cast this on the forest that you just played this turn your forest has already been into play so i'm under the impression I haven't even seen it myself yet, but I'm pretty positive that um, your forest can attack in the same way that like a Mishra's Factory can attack. If you're an old school magic player, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. If not, then just ignore it. So turn one elf, turn two elf, turn three this, turn four, let's say you did an elf. We'll just keep it simple. So now you got four elves and now you tap this. One of your forests just became a four four. I don't know. That kind of sounds solid. And then it could be just like removal bait. But I don't know. It's not fitting with my style of build right now. But just saying that makes me kind of like fall in love with that card. Every forest becomes a little mini threat. And it's very cool because it's situational and it's a tap ability. So it can, ba it can, it can get cute with some of your other stuff. But let's keep moving. Another 3-drop I'm not running is this Beastmaster Ascension. I'm not running any creature pump-ups. I'm running straight elf build. So, this is another card that you can run, but then you're not going to be hitting sweet spots with your Sylvan Messengers and your Lead the Stampedes. The only card that I'm willing to risk that with is a Slate of Ancestry. And we'll save that for the end because I love it so much. I love it. In case you haven't heard of Beastmaster Ascension, three mana for an enchantment, and every time your any a creature attacks, of your any time a creature you control attacks, you put a counter on this thing. As soon as it hits seven, creatures you control get plus five, plus five. It seems strong. And turn one elf, turn two elf, turn three this, swing with two elves. It has two counters on it. Turn four, attack. It has four counters on it. That just seems slow to me. Um, most decks don't have enchant re enchantment removal, so it is possible that it'll get hit the 5-5, five five, but I'm not running it right now. There's so many different ways to build this deck, dude. Right now I'm just going for the combo-licious way, and I, I don't want to even try the super turbo aggro build. I'm just afraid of removal. Um, but let's keep rolling. Alpha status. Three mana, enchanted creature, 
Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two for each other creature on the battlefield that shares a type with it. Okay, let the games begin. This is like an alpha strike, and it's called alpha status, so that kind of makes sense. I love the flavor text, too. The best leaders are made by their followers. That's so dope. And the art's cool, also. Anyways, this card combos with a lot of stuff. Um, it combos with this guy right here. If you have a Spire Tracer and your opponent doesn't have anything with flying, you're swinging in with this dude for a lot of damage. Um, what else does it hit with? If you hit your Taunting Elf and then you cast Alpha Strike on something else, they can't even block it. So that's crazy in its own right. And the fact that the uh, Taunting Elf buffs up the Alpha Strike. So turn 1 Elf, turn 2 Elf, turn 3 Elf. Let's say turn 4, Alpha Strike. And then play another Elf. So how many elves does that put us at? Turn one, two, three, and another one on four. So you got four elves out. So one creature would get plus six, plus six. That's pretty strong for a turn four play when your opponent could have just played like only a cultivate or something like that. So the hyper aggro build of this is a possibility. Um, late game, it gets even stronger. Like you're gonna play games with this deck where you're gonna have seven, eight elves in play. And if you have eight elves, it just gave a creature plus 14, plus 14. So that's a game ender. I don't know, I can almost talk myself into running it. Uh, in Magic 2014, they love to give different cards that do similar things. And here's an example of it. Instead of giving uh, you three alpha strikes, they gave you two alpha strikes and one Blanchwood armor. Three mana, Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus one for each forest you control. Some people are going to like that more, but I don't. I would rather have three alpha statuses, but I'm not even running that anyways. Okay, let's see. God, almost to the end of the, car the cards that I am running. We practically are. Um, let's go through everything that I'm not. We'll keep this as a super thorough vid it's gonna be so long genesis wave this is your late game bomb it's so crazy three mana and x reveal the top x cards of your library you may put any number of permanent cards with converted mana cost x or less from them onto the battlefield then put all cards revealed this way that weren't put into the battlefield into your graveyard okay check out my deck everything costs under four mana and the highest card in this deck in my other build was five so <laughs> If you cast a Genesis Wave for four mana on turn seven, you're basically dumping four cards into play. And if you top deck, top deck this even later in the game, with all your life gain, these de this deck can play long games. So if you Genesis Wave for like six, you're just throwing six cards into play. A lot of them are gonna be forests, and a lot of them are gonna be Sylvan Messengers, which hit more elves. A lot are gonna be Lead the Stampedes, which hit more stuff. And if you're lucky, you might even hit a Slate of Ancestry, which we'll save for the end. It's just a lot of mana, and it's another card that isn't an elf. And if you're running all these cards where you want to get card advantage for hitting creatures and elves with your draw, it's kind of weird running this. I took it out right now, but it is definitely a late game bomb that I could see myself playing. But keep in mind, this is a... Dead card turns one, two, three. You wouldn't want to play this on turn four. You wouldn't want to play this on turn five. I would even be skeptical to play it on turn six a lot of the time. So it's a late game bomb. Um, if you're playing a control build, then do it. But right now I'm not running it. And I don't know. Maybe I'll throw it in. Maybe I won't. But let's keep moving. Okay, if you're playing Hyper Elf Creature Aggro, you need to be playing with these Heedless ones. I've heard this card has animated art when it's in-game too, so that's another thing to look forward to. It's four mana for a Trampling Elf, and it has power and toughness equal to the number of elves on the battlefield. Turn one Elf, turn two Elf, turn three Elf. Turn four, you just played a 4-4 four, four Trample. And Trample is a strong mechanic in this deck. Um, I mean, you can already see how that would combo with playing an Alpha Statics next turn. So if you play turn 1 Elf, turn 2 Elf, turn 3 Elf, turn 4 that, whatever it was called, Heedless one, and then turn 5 Elf, Alpha Status. If they haven't been killing your dudes and you're playing like this, <laughs> like single player game basically, then you're going to be swinging in for, that's an extra 8 from Creatures. And with 5 Elves... 
it would be a 5-5 five, five plus 8. That's 13. That's basically GG on turn 5. And with life gain and stuff like that, it can happen. I don't know. See, there's a lot of different ways to build this deck. I can't say it enough. I mean, I want to try the aggro one, but I'm not going to for a while. Primitive Etchings is another really funky one in terms of a uh, card draw. It's four mana for this enchantment, and reveal the first card you draw each turn. Whenever you reveal a creature card this way, you draw a card. Now, if you check out this deck, I'm running 31 creatures. Okay? That means half the time you're going to be drawing an extra card. I just don't know if it's worth it to pay four mana and potentially be drawing another card each turn. A little leery about that. Next in line, this card is pretty crazy. This is called Ambush Commander. And I'll wait for my uh, lag spike here. Eh, it's taking its time. Let's just keep talking about Primitive Etching while we're waiting. Jeez, super slow. Um, if you play turn one elf, turn two elf, and you're doing like a life gain build, this Primitive Etching could pay off in the long run. I don't know. It's just another card that you can't play, though, if you you won't be able to draw it with your elf draw mechanics. All right, that lag spike is over, so here's Ambush Commander. Five mana for a 2-2. Two -two. I'm not playing with this right now. And with all the board wipes, this deck, this card can bite you back. It's five mana for a 2-2, two -two, and forest you control are 1-1 one -one green elf creatures that are still lands. And you can pay two, sacrifice an elf, target creature gets plus three, plus three. So you can basically pay two mana, sack an elf to give something giant growth. But it's so dis disadvantageous to turn all your forests into 1-1 one, one green elves. I can see it being your kill shot and being like you drop this and then kill them that turn. But it's kind of rare. And with, uh, with dodge and burn being so popular and all the mass removal being so hot right now, um, a lot of the times you're just going to be holding this in your hand and regretting it. It combos with every other elf mechanic. Anything that gives your dudes plus X plus X, if you're playing a trample build, oh my god. If you're playing that heedless one, ugh, see I'm just talking myself into it. That turn four heedless one, turn five this is insane. Uh, here's next in line, another card I'm not running, Voice of the Woods. Five mana for a two two. Tap five untapped elves you control. Put a seven seven green elemental token into play on the battlefield. Ugh, I don't know, man. I can almost talk myself into running this. It has trample, too. I think this is one of the fattest creatures in the deck, that 7-7. Seven, seven. And it's pretty easy to hit five elves. You can do it as an instant, and it combos with untapped mechanics. So that one mana for a 1-1 one, one thing, you'd be able to do this twice in the same... Twice. Once on your turn and once on your opponent's turn. And there's a couple other untapped mechanics that we're going to hit down the line. Actually, it's the next card in the row, so we'll talk about that in just a second. That one's called Seedborn Muse. But this Voice of the Woods, I don't know, dude. Turn 5, you're dropping a 2-2. Two -two. If you're playing that long game, it might work. But 5 mana is a little steep, and I'm playing my turbo combo card draw build. Here's Seedborn Muse, 5 mana for that 2-4. Untap all permanents you control during each player's untap step. So every single creature that we've talked about that has a tap mechanic combos with this. So that means your well wishers. Every turn you're going to be gaining that much life from your well wishers. Anything that gives your dudes plus plus counters, like all the things that gave plus X plus X. Man, this recording's starting to geek out. I'm just gonna have to stay on the same cards for a while since it's so skippy. Oh no, we're cool. Uh, yeah, everything that taps <laughs> just gets crazier with this. I took it out right now because it's five mana, and I'm playing this turbo build. But let's keep moving since uh, my recording setup's getting a little glitchy. Weather Seed Tree Folk seems scrubby. Five mana for a 5-3 trample. Whenever it dies, you return it to your hand. I can see it being huge with all the plus X plus X mechanic and, uh, mechanics, but it's not an elf. So you're not going to hit it with a lot of your stuff, and I don't know. I'm not feeling it. You got two coat of arms. I don't know why they're doing this. I mean, it's another thing to where if you're playing that hyper aggro build, this is your kill shot. I love the flavor text. Hup, two, three, four, don't know how to count no more. So let's say 
turn one elf, turn two elf, turn three elf, turn four elf elf. So turn four, you're at five elves, which is not hard to do. Turn five, you drop a coat of arms. Each creature gets plus one, plus one for each other creature on the battlefield that shares one creature type with it. So all your dudes just got plus four, plus four. And you had five creatures. So let's say your five creatures were all only one ones. Your five one ones just got plus four, plus four. So <laughs> is that right? Your five creatures just got plus four, plus four. So now you have five, five fives, and you're swinging in. That's crazy, dude. There's an aggro build for this, and if you're playing against a deck that can't kill your creatures or deal with it, you're gonna steamroll them. But I love this combo build, so at least try it. If you're doing the control version, this asceticism is one of the best cards in the world. I just got really tired of drawing it and it not being as strong as I thought it would. Certain matchups are gonna hate this card though, so I, I really wanna run it, but I haven't put it back in yet. I'm still experimenting. Anyways, creatures you control have hexproof, pay to regenerate target creature. So not only can they not target your dudes, but you can regenerate them for two mana. I really just haven't needed it. And turn five is a lot of mana, but it's just gonna shut down some decks. If you play this against dodge and burn, they're gonna be going crazy. Um, black decks with all their removal, oh my god. Burn decks. Ah, eh, God, I'm just talking myself into playing it, playing with it right now. I might find a way. This Verdant Embrace seems pretty bad. It's five mana, Enchanted Creature gets plus three, plus three, and at the beginning of each upkeep, you put a Sapperling into play. So five mana, three, three, and every turn, you put a one, one creature into play. That goes for your upkeep and your opponent's upkeep. So it's cool for chump blockers, but I'm not running it. It seems fishy. It seems weird. It just seems like something that your opponent would, in response, kill it. And then you just had some card disadvantage. And this deck is all about card advantage in this build right now. Card draw. It's just elves and card draw. Here's another buff for your buff deck with your rancors and your alpha status and your enlarges. Um, some people say that this deck doesn't have any removal, but I read that the main thing is just to play a taunting elf and then enlarge it a taunting elf and then alpha alpha whatever it so yeah five mana target creature gets plus seven plus seven trample and it must be blocked um okay here we go the way it combos with taunting elf is because all creatures that have to all creatures have to block this elf and if it just turned into a seven eight trample and it probably had a couple other buffs, just for maybe like an obscure plus one, plus one from a Joraga Warcaller or something else. You're swinging in for a lot. And if your opponent hasn't been attacking, and all of a sudden you just enlarge your dude, they're not even, they're not going to see it coming, or if they know the deck, they're going to be paranoid about it. And it's, it's a threat. Like, that's, a, just, that's just a nice, cute mechanic to do. I just don't know if I like it. You get to choose how the damage is dealt too, so it's pretty much just dealing 7 damage to your opponent's untapped creatures, but I'm not doing it right now. I've been killed by this card, but I hate it. Mythic Proportion, 7 mana, Enchanted Creature gets plus 8, plus 8, and has Trample. What the heck, dude? I don't know. Why would you want to run that over and enlarge? Because it's a permanent buff? It's an enchantment, so it stays on the dude. It gives him plus eight, plus eight, and trample. They're not plus eight, plus eight counter, so it doesn't count combo with your Joraga Warmaker. And I don't know. I don't like paying an extra two mana for an extra plus one, plus one for an enchantment. And I'm not running the Nutsy Biorhythm, which I could see being crazy. It's eight mana. Each player's life total becomes the number of creatures he or she controls. So with this deck, it's basically like turn eight, play this, attack, and win. Especially if you have something with trample, or if you just have more creatures and they're a little bit strong. Because um, if your opponent only has like three creatures or four creatures, which is a normal situation, and you swing, they're going to die. But I'm not playing with it. Eight mana is a lot of mana, and it's not an elf. So there's that.
Okay, so those are all the cards that I'm not running in this build. This is a very... I don't know. I took out everything that pumps. No Rancor. I, I took out everything that's like aggro. And makes threats or huge threats. Or trample. Or pumps. And this is what I'm left with. Um, feel free to copy this build. I'm just still experimenting. I mean, this probably isn't going to be the deck that I play tomorrow. And this wasn't the deck that I was playing yesterday. But this is a crazy combo build. 11 one drops for one mana. Each one's peculiar and funky. Nothing is standard. Two drops. All elves. You're always going to be doing turn one elf, turn two elf. If you can't, I mean, you might want to mulligan. And there's so much life gain. Um, I'm slowly getting to that last card. And it's the craziest card in this game, dude. It has the potential of Graveborn Muse that got added to the zombie deck. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Slate of Ancestry. Mother of God. Four mana. Pay four and tap it. You don't have to sacrifice it. You can do this every turn. Sometimes more than that, and we'll touch on that. Pay four mana, discard your hand, draw a card for each creature you control. Does anyone remember Wheel of Fortune from, like, <laughs> beta? <laughs> where you would pay one red and two colorless, each player would discard their hand and draw seven cards. That's what this is, but it's just for you. Okay, I have 31 creatures in this deck, so you're always playing creatures. You're always gonna have creatures on the board, and even if you just have three creatures, this card is worth it. With Lead the Stampedes, you're just hitting more of your fat creatures, with Sylvan Messenger, you're just hitting more creatures. You're going to have so many creatures. And keep in mind that you're not going to hit this Slate of Ancestry with Sylvan Messengers or Lead the Stampedes. So I'm willing to take the risk, and it does happen, to where you play one of those cards, and out of the top four or five cards that you look at, you're going to see your Slate of Ancestry, and it's just going to go to the bottom of your library. But if you just top deck this, and you have elves out, you have no idea how crazy the game is about to get. Um, you're gonna mill yourself out. I can't tell if this is a win more card right now, but it's so much fun that I, I'm i not gonna take these out. I cannot believe that there's two of them, <laughs> and it's so sick. Um, you really need to see it in play to realize its true potential. But it does combo with this little adorable Seedborn Muse. I took out this Seedborn Muse right now because it's not an elf. So I wasn't hitting it with my Sylvan Messenger. But with all the tap mechanics, I really need to throw that back in. I'm just not playing it in this build right now. And I might put it in like right after this vid. Every time that this deck goes long, if you hit this Slate of Ancestry, it's crazy. I mean, I can't even like begin to explain it. Let's say you had four elves out, and you're top decking, and that's what this card does to you. You're going to be top decking so fast. So you play this. It's a little bit mid to late game, and let's say you got four elves out and no cards in hand. You get this into play. You you dump your hand. And it's either going to be, you're either going to have nothing left or just a couple forests, which is fine. So you discard your hand and you draw four cards. Out of those four cards, it's almost guaranteed that you're going to get a hit a Sylvan Messenger or you're going to hit a lead the Stampede. So that's just more and more elves. So you play all those cards and then you dump your hand again. And then you pay four again to discard your hand, which you don't even have anymore. And then you're going to draw so many more elves. You're going to mill yourself, dude. You're going to be drawing, like, probably four cards the first time that you use this ability. The next time, let's say seven. The next time, maybe eight, eleven, twelve. You're going to run out of cards. If you get this Seedborn Muse, you can do this on your turn, and you can do this on your opponent's turn. It's so crazy. So, that's going to wrap this one up. Um... Card draw, Slate of Ancestry, Sylvan Messenger, and Lead the Stampedes. Um, life gain, we got Well-Wishers, 
and the Essence Wardens. And then everything else is a cute elf with a nice ability. Um, if I was going to tweak this deck live right now, I need to find some way to throw this Seedborn Muse in. And that's probably it. I'm pretty content with my build right now, but I want to get that super sweet combo. I'm running 23 Forests if you want to copy this verbatim. And that's it for this vid. Um, subscribe to this channel if you're feeling these magic vids, and let me know or post in the comments. <laughs> and uh, I'm probably going to do a lot more. I'm obsessed with this game, dude. This expansion is really cool to me, and this is my favorite deck in it. This was Sylvan's Might, and thanks for watching. Don't get